gonna show you how to short roll the heel of a sock. Let's do this! Okay, so last time we talked about short rows and I'll just recap from last time. What I showed you was that you can create a piece that looks like this where you have not knit these uh, stitches over here as many times <laughs> as or as you haven't knit as many rows over here as you have knit over here. So basically, if we imagine this as being one <clears throat> row of knitting, we have now now we have our needle point over here, and so we would turn and we would work the first stitch, then we work across, and before we got to the end of the row, we would stop, make a um, turn and pull, and we would leave a couple of stitches over here. Then we would turn and go back to the end, turn and go back again, before we got to the end of this new end here, we would turn leave a couple of stitches, go back to the end. And we would get, not this, but this, right? So what we need to do for a sock heel is that we need to do this, but we need to have this part over here too. Because we don't want a uh, triangle, we want a piece like this. So because it's a heel, right? It's a, uh, it's a yeah, we need something round for our heel. So what we need to do, and what I will show you, is if we again imagine that this is one row of knitting, we would turn <coughs> over here <laughs> and go back. When we got to here, we would leave a couple of stitches. We would wrap and turn or turn and pull and whatever. We would actually turn, go back. Before we got to the end, we would again leave a couple of stitches, wrap this, turn, go back. Before we got to the new end, wrap it, leave a couple of stitches, turn, and go back. And so say I did this, now I have two here and I have two here. I did this until I had a certain number of stitches up here, or until of course my pattern <coughs> said so. Then I would Go back again. Now, where did I end up? I am. It doesn't. I think I was over here. We'll leave some stitches here. Then we turn and we knit back to here. Then I pick up this row here. So I'll have. Now I'll increase this row in this direction. When I got over here, I would turn and I would go back. I would pick up this wrap here. So this would also increase. Then I would wrap it again because I need to, to turn now and then I would go back, pick that up and so on. So what the thing I would get would look like this. So basically I now have a piece <coughs> which would look something like this. So I would end up with a piece that looks like this and when we then, because we left these stitches, we did not cast them off. We did not do anything to them, we just held them. So this piece here would actually hang together here. Meaning that we would get this type of um this type of a shape. So we have a <clears throat> a slanted edge on either side and then a little bit of a straight piece in the middle and they of course have seams up the sides. Now if you look at your socks, they're probably made this way because it's the easiest way to do it on a machine. They're probably made so that when you look at your sock, it uh, probably has a colored heel like this one. So here we go. And then down your heel, you probably have a diagonal line of, and then you have this also. You probably have a diagonal line of holes or these these types of 
picked up stitches or something like that. And that's what I want to show you. There are many other ways of making heels. You can you can make them in, in uh, different ways. I think this is superior to almost all of the heel flap methods and whatever, but that's completely up to you and yeah. But I want to show you these. So <clears throat> what I want to show you is basically this. So you either make a toe or you're going to make a cuff. That's up to you. You can start from up here, you can start from down here. It makes no difference. So what you do is you just knit a cylinder. So just go around and knit all stitches. When you get to the point where you want to, to turn the heel, there are two things. The heel does not add a lot of extra space. So this needs to be right at the point where your heel starts. You do not sort of, <laughs> you, do not, you don't gain a lot of extra fabric when you turn a heel. So this needs to be where the colored part of the socks that you're presumably wearing is starting. Not before it and not up here somewhere because you will get it in the wrong place. So what we do is that we knit up to this point and then we just knit back and forth and we'll leave stitches on either side and we turn and pull these stitches or wrap and turn if you prefer. Don't know why you would, but <laughs> some people can make it look really neat. So I, I um, yeah, if you're, if you're superhuman, then then go for it. Then afterwards, we are going to stop, <clears throat> and then we are going to go back. And now we've made shorter rows. Now we're going to make long rows. So you go out and you pick up your stitches. Then you wrap the next one or pull the next one. Then you go with the other side, you pick up a a, uh, a worked stitch, if you will, a pulled stitch. Then you knit the next one, pull that, turn, go back. Pick up one, pull one, turn, pick up one, pull one, turn. When you have one left in one side and two left on the other, <clears throat> you are going to go back, pick up that stitch, then you're going to work across your uh, the front of your foot and then you're going to go back and pick up the last two pulled stitches here. May not make a lot of sense now, but it will later. So that's how you turn heel and when you look at this, it does actually look, I hope, <laughs> exactly like your sock would with just one diagonal line and the rest of the knitting is continuous. So yeah, I have prepared and also, oh, I forgot, this was not really important point, but I'll just, I just wanted to show you that <clears throat> you can get different uh, angles here. This is every other, it makes this sort of angle. You can take, um, if you find a pattern where it's every third, every fifth, whatever, you can do, just do what the pattern says. Or if you want to design this pattern, you can do that. And also there's a difference between the roundness of it, um, depending on how many stitches you leave in the middle. So here is like two or three stitches, and this I think is five five or six stitches. This is much rounder and this looks much more like a <laughs> like a heel or like a toe and this could be maybe for some different project. So yeah, <clears throat> I have of course prepared a cylinder of sorts and this is going to be my front, that was why I did the little pattern thingy. And this is going to be my back. And because this is my back, I am going to work the heel on these stitches. I am going to leave all of these stitches on the cable for now. <clears throat> so I'll just work back and forth on this, on these stitches. And I won't worry about these until I get, I get to the very last round of my heel. So let's go do that. Okay, so as I said, we are at oh. 
we're at this point now. And what we need to do is we need to knit all stitches except for the last stitch. And then we need to turn and pull our stitch. Um, by the way, I put in a lifeline, so that's just what the pink yarn is. It doesn't, uh, you don't have to do this, it's just because when recording it's always nice to be able to go back if I, uh, if I say something really weird or if I do something wrong. Okay, so I'm at the last two stitches and I'm just going to knit one. Then I am going to slip this back onto the needle, turn the work. Here we are. Then before I knit back the other way, I just put this, this yarn on top of this needle. And then I will just give it a little bit of a tuck in order for this um, knot to be on the top of this needle. Then I'll put the, <laughs> the yarn basically has to go from here, around here, and then back in front because I need to do, um, I need to purl all of these stitches all the way back in order to get um, the stuck knit on the, on the uh, right side. So I will purl every stitch until I have two left and then I'll do exactly the same. Or almost exactly the same because we will be on a purl row rather than on a knit row. Here we are again. I have two stitches left. I am just going to purl the next one. Then I will slip it back. <clears throat> then I will turn <coughs> the work. Then instead of having the yarn here as normal, I'll just put it on top of this needle. Make sure the knot is at the middle. Then I'll keep the yarn in the back and I'll keep my tension. And I will just knit back. So this time I already pulled this stitch so I need to leave one and then pull the next one. So I'm going to when I get I'm going to leave three this time and I'm going to pull the third. The, the fourth sorry. I'm going to pull the fourth. So basically it's it's pretty quick to do short rows because you're not whoops you're not actually knitting that much and for every row you're knitting less so it will feel or at least I feel it's it's pretty quick so now here I have the four left and I'm just going to knit this one put it back turn pull it so basically it will be here and I, will, I want to put it on top of this needle 
and then put it back in front here because now I want to purl back and again I want to purl back until the fourth and do the same. And the tighter you make this stitch, the first stitch after, the one which is going to be the next one we will pull, the tighter you make it, the tighter the finished result will be. So I have this, this annoying tendency to make very loose pearls and therefore my, my the pearl side of, of my, um, my sock here. I sort of have one side which is a little less neat than the other. This is where all of my knits are and this is where all of my pearls are. So it's just a little bit bigger and a little bit bulkier. So if you want it to look really neat, just make sure that those stitches that you're, that you are pulling, make sure they are really tight. So now I have, here we are, now I have four left, I'll just get in a little closer just so you can see what I'm doing, I'm just purling the next one. So now I have one in between, so the next one, so the next um, pulled one, then I return it to that needle, flip it flip it, sorry. Then I put it on, I take the yarn from here and I put it on top. Make sure the knot is at the center and then I knit back. So now I have knit to the second and to the fourth so now I need to knit till the sixth. Sixth? Sixth? Oh, English is it's, it's a very um, different <laughs> language. So there are the first four. It looks like two stitches. Oh, sorry. I have one here, then I have one that is pulled, then I have one here and one that is pulled. And they do look like two stitches, but there are one because they, they are attached at the top. So this is going to be my sixth, sixth <laughs> stitch. I will knit it. Then I will put it back, then I will turn and I will pull it and then put the yarn in front again. So it goes all the way from here, over the needle, under the needle and back over the left hand needle. And then I will continue purling back. And I will also purl to the sixth on this side. I think the issue is that in Danish the th sound of English becomes the, but that just doesn't make English sound right. Again, two, four, and then here's the sixth. <laughs> we will uh, purl it. Oh no, purl it. Slip it back over. Turn the work. Take this yarn, put it over the right, right hand needle. Pull the stitch slightly if we need to. And then we will knit back to the eighth. So that's here. That is the stitch number eight. So I'm just going to knit it first. Return it 
turn the work, pull that stitch, put the yarn in front, and purl back. That's it again. Pull the slip stitch back. Pull it by putting the, the yarn on top of the right hand needle and knit backwards or forwards, whichever you prefer. Okay, so let me just show you where we are. I think that would be nice, just a little catch up. So now we're basically up here. So my my needles are distorting it a little bit. I have all of the the middle stitches. I have them on this side here. So they're pulling upwards. So it looks like I made a, a triangle which is skewed to this side, but it's really not when it uh, when it gets if, if I just dropped all the stitches, it would look more like this. So basically, now I have one, two, three, four poles over here, and I also have one, two, three, four over here. So the, um, do I want to stop or do I make five? Doesn't matter. I'll just stop here and maybe it'll be a very shallow heel but you will have a pattern <laughs> which will uh, dictate how many how many times to turn and how many stitches to leave in between if any some patterns will um, use all stitches and they will wrap and turn all all of them or pull all of them all right so because we are up here now we need to now flip to this side and we need to start picking up our wraps and making new wraps going back here. So what we need to do rather than now turning and going back immediately is that we need to knit this one and then also knit the next two ones together. So basically the stitch that has been wrapped all you do about it is that you put your needle through both of the legs if you will knit them together like this then you go into the next stitch and you knit that so here we go and then you put it back and you wrap that no sorry you pull it and <laughs> here we are you just pull that stitch a little bit and then you purl until you get to the other side where there should be another wrap In your pattern it will say exactly how many stitches are to the other the other stitch that has been worked or pulled. So I found one here. It's the first available stitch which, which has been pulled. So I will just purl these two legs of this stitch together. So that's it. And then you purl the next one. Slip it back. Turn. Put your yarn in front again. Pull this stitch until the knot is at the middle and then you knit back to the other side until you hit a a pulled stitch over here. So now on this side I have two pulled stitches after each other. So what I need to do is I need to pick up this by just 
knitting the two legs together and I need to pick up the next one because this was one I used to turn with after I picked up the last stitch and this is then the new stitch which has not been turned if you will. This is from the old set here, it's from the bottom. The, the thing I just picked up is from the top so now I need to pick up one from the top and then one from the bottom. One of the old ones which we made uh, while we were still making the row shorter if that makes sense. So that's that one. After the old stitch there will be one um, bare stitch so I will knit that, pass it back over, go back, turn and um, pull the stitch and then I will purl until I get to the same situation on the other side. So basically what you get is sort of these, I'll just show you, you always have after the first two uh, rows you will always have a wrap stitch or a pull stitch from the new, from the top if you will, from the long rows paired with one from the short rows or the old rows. So when we get to here, again I have two pulled stitches after each other. I'll pick up the first one knowing that this is the one that I just turned with and I will pick up the next one knowing that this is um, the one that I turned with before. And also you will notice that this has started to curl up and it has started to actually sort of look a little bit like this rather than just a um, arc. Before I turn back, I need to purl the next stitch, pass it, pass it back, pull it. So here we are, and then I will knit back. All right, so <clears throat> when we get down here, Again we have a new a new pulled stitch and we have an old pulled and we need to work both of them. So we'll just knit the first one and knit the second one. Oh I was wrong, it was this wasn't the the last one, this is the last one. So then we knit the next, pass it back to the other needle, pull it and then we purl back to the other side. So we'll just purl every stitch until we get to the next pulled stitch. And since the row is getting longer, this takes longer. Okay, so again here we are. We have two stitches after each other that has been pulled, that have, have been pulled. And we're just gonna purl the first one and purl the second one. And then there is one normal stitch which we're going to purl, pass back over, <clears throat> turn the work, pull the stitch that you just passed back and then knit every stitch until we get to the other side. 
And it's actually kind of fun with the um, the salvage salvage row. What did I call it? The lifeline down here, because <clears throat> you can actually see when when it should start. So you can basically see. I don't know if you can, but I can see <laughs> where it starts, and it's it's. Um, there's a lot of rows back and forth, but you really don't get any extra uh, space for your foot down here or up here, depending on whether or not you're working from the top down or from the toe up. All right, so we're at the other side now. I have two stitches here that need to be worked, and then I have one um, edge stitch, if you will. I do not want to wrap this or pull this, because if I do, I will get... If you see here... I actually did it back here. <laughs> here I actually uh, short rode the, the toe too, and the issue here is that I went all the way to the edge and all the way Oh, this side is fine. It's better anyway. But here I went all the way to the edge. If you do that, you will get a little knot knobbing thing out here. So do not do that. <laughs> you need to leave some space at the edges for the heel to actually sort of sit. I don't know if that's the way you would say it. But of course you have you only have one side being short road, so you would say that all of these would be the edge stitches, but you really need one that is on the same uh, row. I hope that made a little sense, but essentially what we're going to do is we're going to knit the first one here, then we're going to knit the next one, and then we're going to, to continue, because as I said before, we're going to now have well, I think I said we had one left here, but what I meant was we have one normal stitch here and we have two <clears throat> pull stitches over here. So instead of wrapping this going back here, what we are going to do is we are going to knit this. Then we're going to turn and now we can see our completed heel here. And we're going to just work around. And this should, of course, I have a pattern here, so I'm going to work in pattern. And if you had some color work, you would also make sure that your color work was correct. So I will just... So here we are. <clears throat> Just put in this needle. And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to pick up these two stitches. But we are going to do it from this side. So I'll <clears throat> knit the first, then I will knit the two legs of this pulled stitch together, like that. And then the next two legs of this pulled stitch together. And now I can continue. I'll just work this last row and then I'll just show you the finished salt here. Ah. So 
nothing worse than actually trying to knit fast on camera. It always fails. Or crocheting fast, for that matter. Or <clears throat> so I'll just pull it out to the cord so that the the needles sort of distort the um, the finished result. So here you can see I have a round here, <clears throat> and this part which was over here before. Oh, no, you can't see that. I now have a round, and this needle was basically down here before, and because I have short rode it, now I have it up here. Sort of, um, I have basically turned ninety degrees, so now I have it up here instead. So if I continue working in the round, I will get this. Because basically you can put it like this, and then you have just a cylinder this way. Or if you flip up the heel, then automatically your um, the top of your sock will stand up. So <clears throat> all we have accomplished is we've made an L shape. That is all a sock is. It's an L shape shape which is open in one end and closed in the other. So yeah. I will consider actually putting out my own sock pattern, but otherwise I will be linking to one on the blog. So there should be somewhere for you to go to actually get a pattern for a sock, a real sock, not something that has this sort of toe down here, but an actual sock with a short road heel so that you can practice this technique. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again next Friday.